at your sprightly age, you still have multifarious hobbies, from tinkering and driving cars to flying planes to reading to architecture. Do you think, in many ways, this cross-functionality shaped you? That's for someone else to say. Right? But what do you feel? I think you you can't just have one interest. You you need to be able to jump. So I think I've been fortunate in in uh, having those interests. I failed in in some ways when I retired. I said I would relearn the piano. I haven't done that. But you 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 used to play the piano at one time. Long long ago. And I actually started uh, relearning the piano. I got a, a very able piano teacher to, to come and teach me, but other things overtook <laughs> my ability to be consistent. And on the piano, I had one real problem. I, I found I couldn't get, relate my left hand to do something different from my right hand. <laughs> it became Alignment. a fr frustrating issue, and I, I think that sort of waned my urge to, to do what would give me many hours of joy. When you look back at this life, biggest achievement you might? What would you define as your biggest achievement? I, I really wouldn't be able to to define that. There have been many moments which make one feel a sense of great satisfaction, and there have been a few times when it's almost despair. So then I won't ask you which was your most despaired moment, as it were. That's an easier one to uh, <laughs> answer, because I've always felt the, the greatest despair I had was when Tata's decided to put Central India Mills, which was what Jamsaji started, into liquidation for, if I recall at that time, it was 50 lakhs of rupees. Yes. I thought this was a very un -Tata like move, but it was done, and many people went out of work. I saw the misery that it caused. Blue, blue collared workers got taken care of by, by the government. But the officers of the company really suffered, and that's remained in my, in my heart as, as something that was a moment of despair. Mr. Tata, you've uh, sat on international boards. You continue to. You've been fated by governments, nations, admired a lot. Who do you admire? Two people that, apart from J.R.D., whom I have mentioned, who I admire greatly and sort of oscillates between being a family member and a mentor and, and a businessman I admire, two people not connected with me have been inspirational to, to me and have had a profound uh, impression on, on what I've done and how I've done it have been Dr. Amar Bose, who, uh, who Bose developed a, uh, Bose Speakers, the Bose Corporation. He and I uh, enjoyed a, a friendship that was very close and was very personal because he opened his company to me. We, we spent hours and hours together and discussed various things. In fact, I knew more about the Bose Corporation than most people might have done. And the other person uh, is a person called Henry Schott, who, uh, who was the chairman of Cummins Engine Company, where we had a joint venture with Yeah, Delco. the Tata Cummins, yeah. Then became uh, the chairman of Lucent, which was the telecom company that merged with Alcatel. 
those two people were were people that and Henry continues to be today. And Dr. Bose died a couple of years ago. Uh, people that have had a great influence on my on my career. The one thing that you've managed to hide very successfully from people is a deep sense of wit that you possess. Uh, we saw glimpses of it when you related that street urchin story. <laughs> and I, isn't that a, a very Parsi trait to have, I wouldn't say wicked, but to have a titillating wit? And why have you hidden it from people? I haven't hidden it from people. I, some people bring it out. <laughs> uh, the other day, had, had that not been mentioned, it would never have occurred to me to allude to something that, that I do at all the time to speak again, it's... No, so what happened with that street urchin? You were driving. Yeah. And then? You know, it's not something I always used to stop and talk to them because many of them are bright young kids who just don't have a chance. They're not interested in going to school. They're in, interested in a job. They and and they make more money than they would make <laughs> if they were working. And they're just a part of India that's fascinating. It's the young India of tomorrow. Do you think when you when you look back, the appetite for risk amongst the youth in India has increased? Earlier we would follow traditional patterns of jobs. Now more and more people are self-starters. It depends on the area. People like the street urchins, what chance do they have? They look for a, a job. They're, they uh, live by day to day, and they, they sometimes skate on thin ice in terms of the law. It's a difficult thing then to relate them to a middle-class family that works hard, goes to school or college, aspires to be in a company. The, the wants are different. The aspirations are different. But all of them put together would make a, a tremendously entrepreneurial India. So last two questions. Next year, and I know you don't like anniversaries, but next year, the House of Tata will turn 150. That's a significant milestone for any industrial group, especially, you know, in young, vibrant democracies like ours. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I'm very happy to see that we've held together for that period of time. And uh, many companies disintegrate in that kind of period of, are just a tombstone. And I think we should do everything we can to preserve it and to continue that. As I said earlier, the, the group may change. It may look different in the next 30 years, 50 yeah. years. But it should embody the same values and the same ethical standards that it has had. Should never forget that most of its earnings go to philanthropy, not in, in the pockets of founders and, and leaders, and that it's doing something for the common good of mankind. I, th I think that's very satisfying if that, if that were to happen. Finally, how would Ratan Tata like to be remembered? Very quickly, uh, what I said earlier, I'd like to be remembered as a person who made a difference. Not anything more, not anything less. That's as brief, as pithy, and as deep as it can be. Thank you, Mr. Tata, for this lovely conversation. It's very rare to uh, get you to speak, but I'm glad you agreed. There are people who want to uh, hear you. And I'm glad we touched upon some of the issues that we did from business to nation to the world. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Sahil. It's always a pleasure to deal with you and to interact with you. And the pleasure has been mine. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>